yes, so hello, I'm, I'm Frederick, and uh, just as Colin before, this is um, my first Boink workshop that I'm participating, even though I've been active, actively working with Boink uh, for a while. I mean, I'm one of the physicists using it here at CERN. Um, so I will try to give a bit of status update on uh, on our project and everything we do, and, and, and we have some exciting plans. So normally it is uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Field, who does this kind of updates for, for CERN. He's one of the people in IT that are managing our service. Um, but since I'm working on one of our applications and, and more in particular on the successor, um, I, has, I had been asked to uh, well sketch a bit what we'll be doing. But so to, to stress again, this is just the work of a whole team. A lot of people, everybody at CERN actually using this and working with it. Um, so in NHC at home, we use uh, four, we have four applications for different type of studies, uh, also for teams that do their um, do their simulations. So first of all, there is Atlas and CMS, which are two of the, which are the two main experiments actually at the LHC. So the LHC is our big accelerator, the 27 kilometer underground accelerator at CERN. Um, and Atlas and CMS are the two main experiments. So both of them have an application in NHC at home, and both of them, they run simulations on Boeing here that they then use to compare what they get from data because uh, finding new particles, finding new, let's say, proving new theories here in, in high energy particles, the particle physics always means you, you you make predictions following a certain theory and then you try to see can you find the signature in the data or not. So for Atlas, for example, they focus uh, their Boeing studies um, on alternative models of the universe. So they really look like new particles and, and new interactions. Uh, it's a bit broad while CMS is focusing more on the exo dimensions part. Again, the studies for um, that they sent to Boeing, because in general, both experiments, they they try to look for very similar things. Um, and then the third application is the one I'm working with, uh, which is SixTrack and its successor XTrack, which is um, a, a tool that actually allows us to simulate how the particles inside the accelerator behave. So the, the, the protons before they collide. Getting getting protons to these extremely high energies before we collide them is not a trivial task. Um, it's a it's a very unstable thing. So we have um, a dedicated branch in physics, which is called accelerator physics, and and uh, we study the nonlinear behavior of these of um, of the beam and how actually uh, we can optimize it. So in general, six track is used to design and optimize accelerators. Um, in particular, circle colliders like the LHC, where we collide protons, and so the HL LHC is the plant upgrade that we will do in the next uh, six, seven years. Um, and then the fourth application is theory, um, which actually they again, they will simulate high energy particle collisions, but then this is to tune certain parameters in the model. So uh, if you know a bit of particle physics, we're talking about the standard model and uh, there's a, a bunch of parameters that actually are difficult to get out of experiments. So you need some kind of tuning, you need some kind of prediction as well. And so they have their Monte Carlo methods to, to well, tune the parameters better. So that's uh, generally the four applications we have. Um, let me quickly say a bit about the infrastructure. Now, of course, this is not my uh, my field, so I might say something that is not exactly correct, and I count on Lawrence to correct me there. Um, but our servers have been updated to the latest release in January, so the 1.4.2. I believe before they were on a rather old version. Um, and we have a, a, a cluster that is running on CentOS 7.9, so a certain version of CentOS in a scalable setup. We have a load balanced web front and we have dedicated servers for file upload and download. Um, we have six of them in use that can be increased for less or more input output. And the storage backend is on the Ceph file system. Now, for six track, X track, exactly what I'm working with, we have a custom environment because um, there it was chosen already, I think, 20 years ago. It's, it's quite some time that we've been using it to use a dedicated application. So that is not using virtualization. It's a dedicated application. And so it has its own environment as well for submission, assimilation, validation. Um, and then for the database on demand, we use a MySQL uh, server. So we also have, in parallel to that, a test server so that we can develop new code. Like I was saying, as I was saying, we have Xtrack as a successor. So I am currently helping develop the, the custom environment for, for Xtrack. So the submission, assimilation, validation, and we're doing this on the test server. We're already submitting a few, very few jobs to some of the volunteers to see um, how does it work because it's a fundamentally different software. Um, and then it's also tested on CentOS 8 because at CERN, um, 
the, the, the OSs are actually going in generations. Now the CentOS 9 is being distributed in some of the CERN computers, but so not yet on our bank servers. We might target Alma Linux 9. Honestly, I am not sure uh, which OS that is. This I just got from the IT people. Um, so here is some overview plot of what we have been crunching in the last year. So different colors are the four applications. So the blue one is a theory one, the green one CMS, then the red one is Atlas, and the orange one is Sixtrack, so the beams. And as you can see, Sixtrack has a habit of being quite peaked, um, while the three others have a habit of quite continuous jobs. Um, this has always been a bit an well, an issue or a feature, depending on how you see it, of of, um, of the beam tracking code, because it's quite a lot of data, it's quite a lot of simulations, and um, let's say submission goes way faster than analyzing it. Um, on top of that, it also has a bit the disadvantage of being quite difficult to predict how long a job will run, because we're essentially literally following a bunch of particles in the beam pipe, the 27 kilometer beam pipe, and we're trying to figure out what is the stable region of particles, um, because that will describe how stable the certain a certain setting of the accelerator is, right? And so if well, you, you scan a set of initial conditions and those that are quite far away, well, they will die faster. They will hit the wall, they will hit the pipe and then they're out. So you don't know in advance, of course, where you need, where you can start. So we get a lot of jobs that die instantly, literally in less than a minute. Uh, and we have other jobs that can take hours to complete because they're in a stable course. So by definition, it's a bit difficult to design good jobs. This is something we are actually uh, addressing with the extract setup to, to scan in a smarter way so that all jobs have some kind of stable running time. Uh, and we're also looking for a, let's say, less file uh, heavy uh, submission and retrieval system. So on, on the volunteer side, it's a very, very lightweight, but on our side, it is quite uh, disk intense. And that is actually why we get this peak behavior. So by distributing that a bit better, we hope to get a more continuous flow. On top of that, also, since a lot of our users move to the new code already of Xtrack, there's uh, only one, two users at this moment sending a lot of point shops, which is again why uh, it is so peaked, because this is when he's actually retrieving results and analyzing them, and now he's submitting them. This was me, by the way. This not, but the year before was me. Um, so that was a bit the general, uh, let's see, at home. Um, well, from my domain, I will now focus a bit on Xtrack, the, the new application that will replace Sixtrack. So as I mentioned already, uh, in practice, most people in our teams are already running Xtrack. Um, there's very few people still running Sixtrack. Um, so it is about time that we can move Xtrack onto Boink as well. And then we will have a lot of users again that can submit to Boink and we will get a more continuous flow of jobs on that front as well. So what is the whole point? So the Sixtrack was the original code. It's, uh, it's quite old. It was very decent. Um, as I said, it's a tool to track particles through a simulation model of an accelerator. And the whole goal is then to see like how do they behave in a long term time scale. So long term, we're talking about minimally 100,000 turns in the accelerator. We can go up to 1 million or even longer. Um, now, 100,000 turns might look like a lot. So it's 27 kilometers times 100,000. But this is literally a few seconds in the machine, while in reality, the beam stays in for hours, so 10 hours, 20 hours sometimes. So even then, it's only a small fraction of the realistic scenario. Um, but Sixtrack does this quite adequately with very high precision, very fast. It's very versatile. And it's, as I said, very fast. It's highly optimized. It's Fortran. Um, it was a very important tool when the LHC was designed, designed in the early 2000s. Uh, it is still a very important tool up to the last year where people started moving to Xtrack. Um, because, of course, the LHC has, is being optimized all the time. The, the, the parameters on how to operate it, they, they change. We, we push to higher energy. We push to higher intensity. These things need to be tested, simulated, checked, and all of that. This has been always done with Sixtrack. Um, and then one of the big pros as well is that at the start already 20 years ago, there was a, a lightweight app developed for Boeing so that it can be sent to the volunteers in a very low footprint on memory and disk. Um, so then we move a bit to the cons, the reason why we have Xtrack now. Uh, well, the main pro here, Fortran, is at the same time the main con because, well, let's be honest, Fortran is a rather old code and not so many people are very well versed in it. So it became more and more difficult to maintain the code. Also, when over years the functionality of this code kept on growing, it became more and more complicated to, well, make small changes because uh, it's not an easy to read code, so to say. It's also not very modular. 
Um, it, okay, six track by definition, there's only single particle tracking. That means even though we, we pack a bunch of particles that we track through the machine, we check them one by one and we ignore interactions between them, which is an approximation. But of course, we know that there are effects between the particles that might matter. Uh, it's also not suited for lepton machines. What does that mean? Well, as you probably know, the LHC is a hadron collider. That means it's colliding protons. Um, but we also are studying other future machines, like one of the, the very important ones is the FCC, the Future Circle Collider. And that will be in a first stage, that will be an electron collider, electron positron collider. Uh, it will be 100, 100 kilometer. I mean, this is not a certainty that it will come because, you know, things cost money, etc. But the design is uh, in a very, very stable uh, phase. And so a six track would not be able to really do simulations for that machine because there are slightly different physics happening with electrons. Um, so that is the, let's say, the limitation and seeing in six track. And then the next ones are kind of the consequences from that. Because people are moving to the new code, we have currently very few users of six track. So we have a reduced number of jobs in Boeing coming from six track. And on top of that, they're peaked because it's one, two users. So whenever they submit, we have jobs. Whenever they work on the results, we don't have jobs. Um, by the design, it only runs on CPUs. Um, by the design, how the server, let's say the, the, the environment of six track on our server was tuned to this one application. It was only tuned, it was also tuned to one type of study alone. Um, so also that limits the amounts of users here. And then we uh, have a sometimes suboptimal credit computation, exactly because, as I said, jobs can be uh, killed very, very fast, uh, and they might be flagged as invalid, and actually the volunteer cannot get that many new jobs anymore. This was a source of frustration. It is still a source of frustration with the volunteer, so that's a very important thing to change. Now, these things are not inherently due to six track, but more to the way it has been uh, put in the environment, let's say. So... Then we move to the successor, X-Track. X-Suite is the, the whole toolkit. Um, it was built, let's say, really with the goal to address the, the shortcomings from before. So that means that it's easy to maintain. It's in Python. It is very modular. It's in Python. We have a set of different packages. So the functionalities are disentangled in different repositories. We have the tracking engine that does the tracking itself, X-Track. We have X part for particle distributions because in the end, of course, we want to track a whole set of particles. How you distribute them makes a big difference. So we have a, a whole a whole set of tools for that one. We have X fields actually, which is now something that Six Track did not have, which is literally checking how the particles influence each other. Uh, we have X steps. This is uh, something technical, not very important. Then we have X call, which is um, looking for collimation methods. What is that? Well. We have beam protection devices, protons that fall out might damage the machine. So in the real accelerator, we have blocks of tungsten, uh, carbon, and whatever alloys we can make with these things to protect the machine from these particles that fall out. However, these particles go in, they're very highly energetic. They will go out again with slightly different energy. So that's, in a sense, worse. So we have a whole set of these in different stages. And to simulate that, well, this is no longer standard accelerator physics because now these things we're talking about material interaction. So that's a very different thing. Um, this was present in six track already, however, not on Boeing. Now, the way that this is ported, the way that this is uh, perceived, let's say this toolkit, this will be available in Boeing as well. Again, getting a bit more users on, uh, on our site on the Boeing. Now, what is the main, let's say, the main advantage of this uh, toolkit? Because Python, this is not all. Python would be horrendously slow compared to a Fortran code. So it is a just-in-time compilation towards C. So the, the whole kit, all the tools are actually built on this uh, underlying layer, which is called X-Object, uh, X-Objects, sorry, which is a um, made by us special uh, special system to have a... Uh, interface to the simulation in Python. So the user that sets up a simulation does everything in Python. But the moment he starts a tracking, this will compile just in time to the architecture it's running on um, to highly optimized C code. And then we, we exactly match the speed of six track before. So we gain modularity, we gain ease of maintenance, uh, but we keep the same speed. Um, the extra advantage of that is that, of course, since this is now 
in some sense, architecture in independent, as long as we have the correct bindings, we can actually make the simulation run on whatever architecture. So it runs on GPUs. Um, and most of our users actually are already do, doing that. We have our batch system at CERN itself here has some of the high NVIDIA GPUs. We have some uh, V100s, some A100s. And so people run the simulations on these GPUs as well. So that also means that once we have this thing running on Boink in a fairly stable way, we can open it to the volunteers GPUs as well, because it is, let's say, it is hard coded in the code already, this, this capability. Um, okay, so I wrote include multiparticle physics. That is this X field part, which was not present in in six track. Um, and as I as I stressed, we already have a big user base. We have a lot of people using it, so this is a pro promising uh, thing for Boeing. So just a bit of context, maybe uh, about the physics. So if we rewind the situation in the beams department at CERN, let's say five years ago, two years ago, sorry, two years ago, we had five codes that were being run concurrently. So six track here is the one that was running on Boeing. And these are all the different aspects, physics aspects that they could do. Um, as you could see, there was not one code that could do everything. Uh, there was, however, one code that could, only code that could do these uh, advanced collimation features. And that was available on Boeing and that was six track. But we have this huge gap here of things that six track cannot do, which was always filled by other tools. So then at some point, instead of trying to keep on maintaining five different codes in parallel, uh, people started combining these things. And instead of making them, they did not make the mistake, let's say, by, by trying to glue them together, they started from scratch using the knowledge that has been uh, developed over the last 20 years in these different settings to create the X suite environment that has green everywhere, Light green meaning we're working on it. This is actually my specialization, filling this thing completely green. Uh, and this is also actually what I'm working on, getting it on Boink. Um, but you see, this this is a okay, this is just a way to say we try to get everything in one code, and this code will then do everything on Boink, almost everything. Some things cannot be compiled in C because of the way it works. If it cannot be compiled in C, we will not send it to Boink. We don't want to work with virtualization at this stage. We want to keep a native app, which will be a compiled executable. So then every part that can be compiled can go to Boink, which is something like 80% of these things can go on Boink, not everything. Uh, and just to give a bit of uh, a context, we are in close collaboration with different institutes um, like EPFL um, and the Chart, uh, the Chart project, actually, which is a Swiss, Swiss funded project. Um, and that is between EPFL and the Swiss Data Center, SDSC. And they have been developing a lot of tools that actually build on X Suite. So there is a whole bunch of development happening at the larger scale. Now, these things are too specialized and too specific to go to Boink. It's just to give you a flavor of how this thing becomes actually a very central thing in accelerator physics at this stage. Um, so extract on Boink, what we're working on this moment. As I said, we decided to go for a similar approach as six track because we know the volunteers appreciate having a single lightweight application. So we do the same. We pre-compile it. Uh, so the standard operation of X, X track or X suite would be it's compiled just in time the moment you run it on an architecture. So we, we fiddled a bit for Boeing, we pre-compile it and then we just define the architecture we want to support them. We set them on the server. Um, it still means also that the bandwidth, the, the memory and the disk space are very limited because the only thing we need to send to the volunteer besides a very small application, which it, of course he, he gets once, uh, but every job has just the lattice of the accelerator and a set of particles, both combined in one binary file. We're talking about a few megabytes and that's it. Um, and we build on the environment of six track, but again, we're not correcting or expanding it. We're rebuilding it from scratch um to address some of the issues or let's say to not make the same approaches in some cases like the, the things with the credit computation etc um and also i think for me because that's what i'm working on for me it's extremely important that we are not limiting ourselves to one type of study as i said the, the six track environment on boeing was tuned to one very specific type of study which is a very important one that a lot of people use still it's only one type of study by relaxing this and just allowing anything that can be compiled to see any kind of study that needs a bit of time, let's say, there will be a lot more people that can actually benefit from using Boink here. So 
that is the design goal. Where are we now? Well, we made two executables for Windows and for Linux on our test server. So every now and then in the last few weeks, we have been sending a few jobs to actually see that we generate them. They can be crunched. Some people, some of the volunteers crunch them. Um, we are near completion. I'm expecting literally next week, start submitting jobs in the order of several thousands to really get a study and, and get some physics study that we know we did already and we can benchmark and see that it works. So we're getting very close to have a, a working test server. Uh, as I said, we're not limited to one type of study. That's a very important thing for me. Um, we only, however, can take the compilable parts of the toolkit, which is most of them. At the first stage, we're focusing on CPU. As we have to pre-compile everything, uh, it will be a bit more work to make it uh, work with GPUs, which is certainly not uh, unachievable. It's just something, well, we need to spend a bit of time. So we decided, let's first make sure we have it running for CPUs. And then in the next stage, we open up for GPUs. Extract does it. So the code itself can do it. The simulation code can do it and does it. It's just a matter of opening it up in our custom environment on Boink, make sure that everything works as we want. And then, as I said, we want to address the credit issue by a smart sampling. So one of the uh, design choices of the original six track was to sample radially and send batches per angle and per radius of particles. That also means that one job could have only very high amplitude particles which have an extremely high chance of getting lost immediately. So these jobs, they would die within a second. So this can be avoided by just sampling uniformly along the radius so that there is always a few particles that will survive and a few particles that will die very fast. Uh, and then I hope that is something that the volunteers will appreciate. Um, and then to finalize, let me give one example study, which is probably going to be one of the most uh, intense jobs in the next few months. It is actually designed um the design of an ml model of first the high lumi high luminosity upgrade of the lhc in the second stage the fcc fcc is this 100 kilometer accelerator that is planned planned uh, let's say ideologically uh, funding is, uh, is still always the question um so the, the idea is we have so many parameters in an accelerator we're talking hundreds thousands of different things that you can tune in operation you change one thing and you lost the beam so we're always looking for the combination that actually makes the, the accelerator perform the most stable and the best. Now, until now, we're always scanning some parameters based on the theory that we know, okay, we're expecting some stability there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but for very new machines for which we have zero experience, like the FCC, where it's very difficult to say how it will behave in certain conditions, it would be interesting to be able to scan a full parameter group and then put some... Bayesian optimization or whatever optimization optimization scheme to steer the design of the of the optics of this machine towards a region where it would be the most stable, let's say. Uh, and that is actually this project that has been supported by by chart um, to make this kind of multi-parameter model that will be able to predict the stability criteria in function of a set of parameters uh, as a surrogate ML model. Obviously, as is always the case with machine learning, to train a model with high fidelity, you need a lot of data. When we're such high dimensional models, then we need a humongous amount of data. Tracking takes a long time. Uh, we're talking tracking, let's say, tracking 100 particles for 100,000 turns will take us three, four hours in a machine as LHC and a, an order of magnitude more in a machine as the FCC. And that's only some, some 100 particles. We need, of course, hundreds of thousands of particles to get some decent estimate of the beam stability. And that all of that is for one parameter definition. So we're, we're taking, talking about a humongous amount of chops. So the idea is to actually interpolate the parameter set with a surrogate ML model. So this will be a lot of um, uh, a lot of chops. And this is just one example study. As I said, I want to avoid exactly the tailoring to one type of study. So there will be a whole bunch of other studies as well, but this will be probably one of the first because they are spending a bit of money to help uh, push the development of Boink. I mean, our custom environment of Boink. Um, and I think that is all I want to say. I just let me thank all our volunteers for the support over the last uh, few decades. And for those that want some more information, general LAC at home information is on this webpage, six track information here, and X Suite, the new X track is on this webpage. And many thanks.